Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. This is Chrisum, and I'd like to welcome you to another conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Um, I'd like to welcome in, uh, everyone to this conversation about uh, the powers and the gifts that the Kundalini can bring to a person. But at the beginning of this show, I would like to talk with you about some of the other areas where you can get this information. Uh, Kundalini Awakening System, the number one dot com. Uh, so that's Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com is a website that has a lot of these teachings on it. You can also go to a community on the Yahoo uh, channel, and that is Kundalini Awakening Systems One at Yahoo Groups dot com. And then we also have some groups on Facebook and. Uh, those groups are Kundalini Awakening, uh, exclamation point, <laughs> and Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 on the uh, Facebook groups, as well as a Kundalini Ashram, which is also on Facebook. And so uh, with the YouTube, the YouTube channel is Chrisum and O Kundalini, and it looks, it's Chrisum Zero and then Kundalini. And that is the, the YouTube channel, and there's about uh, 225 videos uh, all about the Kundalini uh, on that channel. So feel free to go to those areas for other uh, for extra information about specific topics that I haven't covered yet in these radio programs. At this point, I would like to give the mic over to Centara, and she has some announcements to make. Thank you, Chrism. Well, it's just over three weeks to go before the retreat begins in Santa Rosa, and I'm getting quite excited about it and very much looking forward to meeting everybody who is able to come. Um, you know, if you're able to make it to the retreat, you will discover what it is like to spend time with other Kundalini people and to spend time with the Kundalini Awakened Teacher, Chrism. And it is really a fantastic thing. You will be very glad you made the effort to come if you are able to do so. So that retreat is happening on Saturday, April the 20th, as I said, in Santa Rosa, and on Sunday, April the 21st. And the cost of the retreat is $200. And if I could just say um, to those who have already sent a deposit to Eileen, you should have received your receipt in your email address by now and the address of the venue. And if you want to cut costs by sharing a room in a hotel near the venue, then please get on to me again, and I will do my best to help facilitate this um, for you. Um, I know that some people who have written to say that they are going to come to the retreat, well, they haven't yet sent a deposit, and I would kindly request if people could do that as soon as they are able. It would help greatly to know who was coming in our planning for the retreat. So, again, you can write to me at kundalinimatters at gmail.com or you can phone Eileen if you have any questions at all about the retreat. And Eileen's number is 239-246-5900. And, again, I am looking forward to meeting everybody who can make it to Santa Rosa in April. So that's it, Chris. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, Santara. And I would like to say thank you to Santara and her family uh, for sponsoring this, this radio program, uh, you know, coming to you from the Kingdom of Kerry in the, uh, the country of Ireland. I would like to thank you all, and I would like to thank Eileen Laurel for her gifts that she gives to this program, and uh, thank you, Eileen. Okay, let's begin with, with the powers of the Kundalini. The powers are very real. They do come. And so they don't just come singularly. They can come in sweets. But the scenario with the powers is, as much as you do the power or the gift of the kundalini, that power or gift will do you at the same time. Now, 
especially in the beginning stages, a person's gift uh, has to be acclimated by that individual. So an example would be levitation. Levitation isn't just to the degree of just floating up in the air and bouncing off the walls because you're not always in a seated position uh, when when you might levitate. And, and what what happens is you'll just be walking along and the kundalini levitation may just come upon you and all of a sudden you find it very, very difficult to walk. It's as if magnetic balloons are in the way of your feet and your feet are pushed out from under you uh, every, with almost every step that you take. And, and think about it. Think about trying to do your job and not being able to walk the way you normally would. Think about just trying to get around with no problem, you know, no medical problem with your feet or your legs, but you're just not able to find purchase on the ground. This is what levitation at the beginning stages can sometimes be like. And so I want you to understand that as much as you do power, the power itself will do you. And this this kind of goes across the, the, the chart for Kundalini. Kundalini does the body as much as the body is is being transformed by the Kundalini. And this, this isn't a summertime uh process. This process goes for the rest of your life. There is no end point. While you have the Kundalini, you're constantly, constantly moving towards a greater enlightenment of the physical package while you have the physical package in existence. Okay. So Kundalini goes for the rest of your life. And many of these skills will also be in attendance with the, the physical body as it goes through the, the greater levels of enlightenment for the rest of the life of that body. Uh, levitation is, is often one of the things that, that people really uh, develop an interest in because it seems it's so close to flying. Uh, but levitation has its, its downsides, as I mentioned earlier, but it does have its really cool upsides too because you can you can literally float, and yet you don't feel like you're floating. You feel like you're in a state of beingness that just surpasses your normal five-sense physical matrix of comprehension. You, you don't have your normal comprehension faculties in place. And so things are also a little bit jumbled up in those areas with regards to the gifts and how these, these sacred skills begin to do the person as well as the person experiencing those skills. Uh, many of the skills that come early, uh, telepathy, uh, clairvoyance, uh, clairaudience, uh, I should probably explain what those are. Clairvoyance is clear seeing or the ability to to see in a, in a clear way. Clairvoyance can also be uh, applied to uh, seeing some aspects of the future or being able to see uh, in a way that, uh, that, that allows the person to see things that other people normally don't see. So clairvoyance, you know, is, is one of the things that can come. Tele telekinesis can also occur. Uh, clairaudience is the the listening to and the hearing of spiritual or, shall we say, etheric energy-based systems uh, that are constantly communicating to a person. Uh, the ancient Hindu would call this the one of the one of the uh, one of the expressions is, is the uh, the nada n a d a. The nada sounds are like a, a vast system of sound that is not only heard but it is felt. It is, the nada is almost like a state of being and a sound at the same time. And you, you hear it all the time. I'm hearing it right now. Uh, the nada is it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, sound of, oh gosh, how do you describe it? <clears throat> It's like 
like an ongoing vibrancy that is of a sound quality that is always there. It's always there. It always permeates uh, your consciousness. It's not coming through the ears, but it is coming through the areas of the brain that process sound so that you recognize it as sound. Uh, this is not so much the uh, the humming or the or the or the the tones that we can sometimes hear. Sometimes a person will hear it. Um, how, how did that sound, Centara? Was that pretty good? I'm impressed. Yes. <laughs> I I was sure it would play over the phone. Anyway, yeah, you'll get a you'll get a sound quality like that. This is not what I'm talking about. The nada is a is a vast, almost like a cosmic type of sound. And I know, once again, words fail in describing you know aspects of the Kundalini. But the the, the nada is this very very beautiful, strong, pervasive, consistent uh, audio interpretation by the by the brain it's a, it's a it's a sound that you get but it's also something that you can tie into uh when you meditate you can just hear the nada and just go right there and you you, you could and the nada really can just help take you into these sacred spaces so the the clear audience also allows you to hear entities entities or uh you know which which I always say don't communicate with but you know it, it opens the uh the the aspects of the of the crown chakra that allow you to hear spiritual creation spiritual creation in compasses entities and nada and and many of the other qualities of of the the audio that you might hear on a spiritual level in a spiritual way. Uh, sometimes those of you who may hear your names called, you won't hear your name called so much with your ears. It will, it will, it will be processed by the same area of the brain, but it's of a spiritual sort. Often, uh, uh, certain levels of guidance will call a person's name, just to begin the process of a person understanding that oh, no one was here in the room, and I heard my name called, and oh my gosh. What is going on? And so it begins that process of, of self-discovery. And so, yeah, clear audience uh, also includes levels of telepathy because when they say you're reading a person's mind, well, you're not exactly reading a person's mind. Uh, you may be hearing their thoughts. And this, once again, goes to a clear audience uh, function where you're not so much reading the mind as you're hearing the mind as they think the various thoughts that the person is thinking. And so when you walk through a mall and you have the Kundalini awakening and you, you have the clairaudient aspect coming on full, well, you hear all kinds of different things. It's a big mishmash of, of different thoughts and different feelings and different uh, understanding and self-regret and love and hate and evil and beauty and joy and all these things mixed together as you walk down the mall, it can be quite a cacophony of, of sound and thoughts and issues. And, and this is this is a broadband telepathic uh, symptom right there. Broadband meaning it it brings it all in all at the same time, right straight into your clairaudient. Uh, uh, factors, and then then we have the narrow band telepathy. So narrow band telepathy meaning just person to person, just just within a few people. And if you're sitting next to a person on a bus or a train or something like that, maybe at that point you're having narrow band telepathic symptoms. And in this narrow band tele telepathy, you just hear the person. So if they're reading a paper and they're sub-vocalizing to themselves what they're reading in the paper, then you'll hear that. You'll hear, oh, Reuters News said that a dog, you know, ate a sea lion. Something I was reading earlier today. So, so narrowband telepathy is also tied in to the clairaudient channels. Uh, but with telepathy, you can also see certain things. So 
you know, which ties into the clairvoyant channel. You can see uh, a person's energetic field and specific areas of that energetic field. An energetic field is often made up of the different emanations of the seven chakras. So, so the first chakra will have a certain emanation. It'll come out as a color, and uh, not typically a static color, but a moving color, a, a color that will move as the person's thoughts and, and feelings about life move. So will that color move and, and, and perambulate into different hues. So as you go through the seven, the seven chakras of an individual, which make up the seven layers of the auric field, uh, you can see certain things perhaps embedded in those certain fields. So within the colors that are coming to a person, a person might see a, a, a heart with a, with a, you know, a tear in it or a hole. And, you know, this person may have, have been experiencing a heartbreak uh, recently or even in the distant past that is still having an effect on the person at the present time. Or they may have... Uh, uh, you know, lost their job. May, they may be destitute. So you'll see symbols in the auric layers that represent the symbols that would equate to to being destitute or, or without employment, things of that nature. Uh, often a person can see entities embedded in a person's auric layers as well. And, you know, once again, you, this is a sacred skill. This is a sacred gift. And so you don't go around, you know, diddling around in people's energetic fields just because you and your limited five-sense understandings of what is right or wrong uh, thinks that that uh, entity shouldn't be there. Well, you need to know the karmic understandings of what a person is going through before you start changing the lessons of a karmic nature that a person has set themselves up to experience. Very, very, very important to understand that. You and your five-sense limited understandings have no clue about what that person's karmic intention is. And so be be very, very careful before you think you can just go in and start, you know, putting your finger in, in the pie of their life and uh, starting to change things without without them knowing it. Not to say that can never be done, but to say that, you know, it's not something that you do just as, as you would, uh, you know, open a door for somebody. So uh, one can see the auric levels and one can see uh, symbolized objects as experiences that are embedded in the auric levels. Uh, the same way one can hear the sounds of, of a person coming from their thought waves or, their, or any of these spiritual creations that may be attached to them. Uh, one good example of, uh, of, of clairvoyance and clairaudience mix is... Uh, and it's terrible. It's a terrible affliction. Alcoholism is a terrible, terrible, terrible affliction. It, it, you know, out of all the drugs that are legal, alcohol should not be one of them. Right. And yet it is. And so people get addicted to alcohol. And some people get really, really addicted to the alcohol. And they blow holes in their auric field uh, upon which... Uh, entities can be attracted to come in and begin to take over uh, that person's body. And uh, the entity will come in, and the person is homeless, typically a street person or somebody who is, uh, shall we say, out of sync with with, uh, the the majority of other uh, uh, members of society. And they'll be talking to themselves quite a bit, uh, almost like having this... uh, this huge grand conversation with themselves. And when you're Kundalini awakened, you can see the entity that is orchestrating that conversation with that individual. You can actually see the soul or the spirit of the individual uh, succumbing to the control of that entity. Uh, and entities are far, they have, a, they have a greater advantage because we are a five sense limited uh life form while we are on this planet without Kundalini. And and so the entities can take full advantage of that and, you know, help a person into an addiction or help a person into a a feeling that they are omnipotent and, you know, they are the great leader of this or that. And 
and uh, oh, but with my faithful friend, uh, the entity archangel this, or you know, super spiritual person that, with 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 my great powers, you know, I can you know I can do this or this or that on the uh, spiritual plane, and you know, it isn't so. It's just a lie that a person's ego is, is allowing to to uh, to control them with. So with the alcoholism, you can hear and see the interactions of discarnate entities upon a human system, but also with uh, with uh, the the ego infatuated entity uh, infestation. One can also see that ego uh, entity infestation on another person, and this also happens with people who are who you know who. Have, come into a certain level of kundalini awakening they you know they be, because they're impatient or you know they have uh issues that that make them want to feel more powerful they maybe have low self esteem or they they want to be seen as a great and powerful oz type of person uh, they will make a deal they make a deal with entity they say wow okay They'll understand that it's a dark entity, and yet they'll want to do good things with that dark entity, and it very rarely works out well. Uh, very rarely works out well. And so I will I will advise all of you who are into the Kundalini and are active with the Kundalini not to partake of dark entity trying to do something good with it. Uh, there was a very famous... Uh, uh, He's almost like a mage eye, uh, but but he was a mage, M A G E, and his name is Abramelin. And some of you may be familiar with uh, the writings of Abramelin the mage, and uh, he was very clear about this as well. This this was a very very astute individual uh, who got beyond the the uh, encumbrances of the ego. And even then, he said, you know, when you're dealing with with entities, and he would call them demons. So when you're dealing with the demonic, uh, you have to come into that level of communication from an absolutely pure, pure of heart uh, position. If you do not do that, then the demon will basically trick you and make you think that you're doing good when in fact you are not and begin to to unravel and begin to feed off of off of your life force in a way that can commit terrible, terrible tragedy upon you and upon other people. So if there are any any of you out there that are considering because of your impatience or because you want to be seen in a certain way uh, by others, don't don't pretend to to be controlling uh Entity or dark entity force. Don't pretend to do that because it's just a fool. It's a fool of the ego that wants to do that and that, will, that wants to try to do that uh, in a way that gives them self aggrandizement. So, within the context of, of seeing and interacting both visually and, and audially with, uh, with these skills. You open yourself up to a great, huge, um, a great, huge, forgive my, my English, but a very large level of activity that exists beyond the normal five-sense person, beyond the five-sense understanding. Now you're in the astral. Now you're in the spiritual. Now you're in the causal areas of, of creation, and, and that is, that is literally as large, if not larger, than the physical aspect of life, which you're, which you're living from right now. So that's just with clairvoyance and clairaudience. You know, with telekinesis, uh, you know, the, the moving of objects, well, okay, that does happen for some people as well. That's somewhat less common. That is somewhat less common due to the level of of uh, damage that can be done uh, from a from a person that does not have their ego in in the proper channel of of, uh, of training yet. 
Uh, but it can be done. So, for instance, uh, uh, you can lift the car off of a person, you know, in an action. You can lift the car off of a person. You can do some pretty wild things. Uh, typically, you won't be throwing the car over the building. Okay. That's not typically what will happen. I mean, that, there would be some very serious consequences uh, were a person to do that without... Uh, without the controls that Kundalini typically places on a person. Uh, telekinesis uh, is helpful in instances where physical strength of a five-sense variety is not enough. Okay. And so telekinetics can come in to the Kundalini awakening person. And it, in, in certain levels of non-aggrandizement-oriented uh, assistance can be given. All of these skills, all of these special skills are best used in the service of other people, not for the service of the individual that's having them. So, for instance, healing is another special skill that is given. And within the healing context, once again, uh, it is the kundalini that does the work. It is not the ego of the individual that does the work. So you're not going to hear me going, oh, yeah, yeah, the other day I walked through the hospital, I raised my arms, and I healed everybody there. Okay. You're not going to, you, you know, don't take a person like that seriously uh, if, you, if you ever come across a person like that. Uh, the ego of a person does not heal. It doesn't heal the way the kundalini heals. The ego of a person can, can help a person in, now, the early stages of life are surviving on this world, but in the metaphysical areas of life, as far as spiritual evolution, it is the Kundalini that does the work. It is the grace of the Sacred Father, the Sacred Mother, uh, expressing through the channel of the Sacred Child, which is the individual having the Kundalini. That is what does the work. So a person, a person is there to offer healings but you are not the giver of the healing, so to speak. Your, your physical presence is there. You're part of the equation, but you're not the sum total of the equation. Uh, at best, at the very best, you're one-third, and, and only if that one-third is as egoless as possible. And, uh, and so, yeah, with healing, with healing, you want to be very, very careful again. You need to know. You need to understand the karma of the individual, uh, if, it, if it is something that you're going into, but if you're if you're there just as a as a chalice of the kundalini, if you're there as that living divine vehicle of the kundalini, you don't need to worry about giving healing. The kundalini itself knows the karma of an individual or group of individuals around you. It knows who can have and what they can have and how they need to have it and when they need to have it and even if they need to have it. Okay. The Kundalini knows these things. Now, it may, through clear audience, it may communicate that to you. That's quite, that, that is not out of the realm of possibility. As a matter of fact, I think that's fairly common. But it is the Kundalini that is saying, okay, uh, person, have a look there at that Centara person, and let's see, hmm. oh yeah, okay, okay, karmically, yeah, this, this, and that, but within the karmic levels of their agreement, having this body in the fight, this is what can be done, and so the Kundalini will do that. You, as an individual, will not do that, but you, as a part of a divine uh, equation, you, as a part of a divine co- equation, can do that. Okay. But you need to be very, very pure. Just as Abramelin the mage said, you need to be very, very, very pure. Uh, getting back to some of the, the powers, uh, weather control, weather modification can be done through the Kundalini. Uh, it's a way of calling. That's how I found it to be. It's just a way of calling. A way of it's a mix between wanting and calling. Kind of hard to describe, at least for me, and how it's done 
with me, to me. Um, it's, it's an appreciation of all different weather systems, and it's an appreciation of life that exists within the, the, the different levels of the atmosphere, the atmosphere troposphere, you know, all of these different uh, uh, levels of gaseous environments that circle the globe uh, in various stages. Almost like when you see a person's aura, you can see the gaseous uh, uh, environment circling the globe that way as well. And there are life forms in those gaseous environments as well. And so these these different weather patterns can be called upon if you begin to tie into the nature, the, the nature of life of this world. And you are tied into that because you have the planet. So you are tied into the nature aspects of the world and certain levels of communication can be given that allow a specific form of weather to occur if it remains in balance with the rest of the planet. You can't call a rainstorm over to a drought-stricken area uh, if, if, if uh, there are consequences to the to other parts of the globe. Uh, to have, maybe that rainstorm is intended for other areas, so to speak. And so you have to be in that level of communication and surrender to the the forces of life and nature on this world, even if it's in, in, you know, it's not in agreement with what your wants or wishes are at the time. You know, there's a level of surrender to it. So weather modification is definitely one of the skills that can happen. Uh, communication uh, with animals is another skill that is often given. Uh, and yet with Kundalini, there's such a degree of love and divine enlightenment that the animals see this far faster than humans do. Animals and, and, and small babies will see this in a person. They'll always kind of look when they're looking at you, even the animals will look kind of slightly above the top of your head and that's what they're seeing. That is what is transfixing them and that is what allows them to feel very comfortable around you. And this is another sacred gift that being able to be with animals, especially within an ahimsa environment or a do no harm, do do no harm to any any life form, uh, understanding of life. If you're able to have that and and uh, practice that, well, the, the ahimsa can come to be quite strong, and the animals will read this. They'll take refuge upon you. I've had snakes, uh, Lasha, my my lovely little kid, at she likes to what's the word, uh, practice her hunting skills. And those those targets of her hunting skills will sometimes take refuge upon me knowing that I won't let any harm come to them. Certainly not from Lasha. Lasha gets put in the house when I think he gets out of her. Because she's fed. She's not uh, you know, she's not starving. She's not hunting for food, she's hunting for fun, and uh, she has toys here in the, in the house, and she can do that with right. So, communication with animals, and I mean animals from insects to fish to birds to mammals to reptiles to bacteria to virus uh, and to, to some of the other life forms that have yet to be discover, discovered by physical scientists. Uh, you have the ability to communicate with these areas. And you have the ability to merge in a loving way with these areas. These are not so much, this is not a skill that you manipulate through conscious, ego-based understanding, although that can sometimes occur. But it is more of a space of, of love, a St. Francis of Assisi type of love where love is communicated outward from the aura into the environment, and the environment responds very positively to that type of communication. And this comes. This comes with kundalini awakening. If the karma, shall we say, the kundalini karma of the individual uh, brings it out upon a person, and, and you as an individual, you have no control over your kundalini karma. Your kundalini has control 
over the different experiences and graces and skills that your awakening will bring upon you. Uh, you don't get to have as much of a choice as you might wish to have or you might you might think to have or what some entity may be whispering in your ear, oh, don't listen to that person. He doesn't know. You can fly here and jump off that building. So, <laughs> so, so be careful. Be careful uh, and really get your ego under control. Really, really, really get your ego under control. I can't say it enough. If I could say it for the next, you know, 60 minutes, I would. Get that ego under control because it can really backfire. And the kundalini will allow you to suffer. If you make a a decision within the kundalini that is is ego-based or hurtful-based to other people, well, you're going to receive the ramification of that choice. And the the, the kundalini will see to it that that ego is, is... is chastised to the degree that it needs to be in order to learn the special lessons that the Kundalini uh, insists we learn before we utilize sacred gifts. And that that brings me up to a point of uh, opening your Kundalini just so that you can have sacred gifts. Well, that is a big no-no. I'll be doing a video on that pretty soon. You... uh, you don't want to chase the powers of the Kundalini. You do not want to do that. If you do that, you're in for a whole series of, of internal destructions. Uh, the uh, the famous seer, Edgar Cayce, uh, one of America's uh, uh, premier uh, a psychic in the uh, early part of the last century, from the 20s to the 40s, uh, 1920s to 1940s. Uh, his source basically spoke of the Kundalini as, as something that, if, if you don't have the right intention, it will dissolve you from the inside out. And I, I, I can't agree more with that. I mean, I think that is an absolute. That really made me look twice at Edgar Casey's work because it was so true to my experience. Uh, these powers, if, you, if they're used incorrectly, can really wreak havoc on the physical system. So you really want to to get your ego in a, in balance. And by that I mean being very charitable, being very honest, being very truthful, being very non uh, self aggrandizing. And, and if you don't know what aggrandizement it is. It's Blowing your own horn, or, or you know, giving yourself a great celebration of how great you are, and how wonderful you are, and how terrible everybody else are, you know, is in comparison to the greatness that you are. That type of thing. Uh, you need to really get yourself into a a program of allowing the ego to be trained or to be dismantled. Either way, it needs to get out of the way of your enlightenment. It needs to get it. Now, if you're practicing Huna, H-U-N-A, Huna, Huna, the ego is is often described as Unihipili, Unihipili, and the the, uh, the higher conscious self, which is where we're talking from, for the most part in our society, is called the Uhane, uh, U-H-A-N-E. And then, of course, the Kundalini self would be called the Almakua, now, within that belief system, which really has some very, very, very solid footing within a Kundalini equation, is the Unihipili desperately wants to become a middle self, a Huhane, and the Uhane desperately wants to become an Amakua. And so within the context of the, of the evolution of a soul, Unihipili, an ego self, can become a middle self, and a middle self can become a high self or an amakua. And, you know, if that is is what you're practicing, well then definitely uh, give that unihipili uh, very strong instructions about what it is allowed to do and what it's not allowed to do. How it is allowed to participate by by, uh, the gift of energy uh, from unihipili to amakua and, and, you know, what what the moral foundations are. 
So being truthful, being honest, being kind, being helpful, being forgiving, being tolerant, uh, being loving, extremely loving, and, and having the strength of love and the fortitude of love and the wisdom of love. And it's not just love as an ooey-gooey, you know, kiss-me baby uh, type of scenario. This is love that allows a person to to be hurt in front of you because you know that that person needs to, you know, like giving birth. You know, giving birth is this huge act of amazing love and it's so painful and yet it there at the same time it's joyful and painful and joyful and painful and you're not trying to rob the mother of the of the pain and you're not trying to rob the child of the pain of coming into the open air I mean so this, this is the quality, one of the qualities of love that I'm talking about here really get the ego under control do not chase kundalini powers just to have an advantage over another person do not chase the kundalini powers just in order to have uh, a way to 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 give the ego more self grandeur than it than it than it has uh, without the without the kundalini. Do not chase kundalini for these reasons. Uh, it's very important because this this is an energy that is beyond what anything in this physical understanding, this physical life understanding has to offer. This is divine skill. It's a divine power. And yes, to a large degree, the divine will control how much and, and, and what of you're allowed to have. But a lot of it is going, you're going to be given choices on how to do certain things and what is the appropriate lesson to learn by doing certain things. And what I'm trying to get across to you today is that you do all of these things from a level of egolessness. You do not allow the ego or the unihipiti to become the controlling aspect of what is being done. And you open yourself to the inner guidance that the kundalini brings. And, uh, let's talk a little bit about this inner guidance. Entities can embed themselves into your auric layer by virtue of of the kundalini itself. The kundalini can go, oh, okay, okay, uh, uh, this person here, this, this, let's look at this chrism guy. Oh, boy, God, I guess he did a lot of work. Uh, let's see, okay, well, we're going to embed this entity into him. So this, this, this negative entity, this entity that wants to do this or that within him, so that he can learn certain lessons about what not to do. So let's see, okay, we'll put it into him left calf or something like that. And then, boom, that entity comes in there and all of a sudden you're giving, you know, you're being given certain stimulus to, to act a certain way. And it's not a, it's not in a way that, that you would normally act. And so you, you begin to question and you query and you realize, ah, okay, this is an embedded entity and I have lessons to learn from this. So I am going to evolve this entity as I evolve myself. And I'm going to not, you know, think these terrible thoughts or do these terrible things because this entity, you know, it's just a test. And I'm going to pass the test by not doing these things. So this can also occur. So don't be surprised that the Kundalini itself begins to set you up for certain levels of experience of a power nature, nature that that is teaching you from the inside out. Teaching you from the inside out. Now, for a lot of people... It may be all about powers. Oh, okay, you know, we'll, we'll give this person an entity that can do a certain thing, and let's see what they do with that. Let's see what kind of karma they create for themselves with that. Okay, so this can also occur. And so once again, it is very, very, very important for a person to come into this as pure as they can be. And by... If, uh, don't worry, I'll get into some of the other skill sets. So don't, don't worry. Uh, the thing that I want you to understand is that uh, purity is, is a very, very important concept. Often before you, you're allowed to use certain skills within the Kundalini equation, 
you have to have been experiencing a level of refinement, inner refinement, that brings up the toxicities of your life, the toxicities of of what you have brought into this life through a karmic level, but also the toxicities of what you have developed within this life on an experiential level. And so the, all the hurts and the issues and the pain need to come up, and they will come up. They come up in levels of expression that that are, that are often in combinations with other events. So if you start seeing a, a repetition of certain types of events in your life, uh, that seem to come in, in, in waves upon waves upon waves. We have something to learn from that, and you need to respond in a different way. I think it was Einstein that said uh, the, the meaning of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different outcome. Well, I'm going to suggest that you do not do the same thing, that you, that you begin to change the way that you respond to this, this recurring manifestation in your life, and, and uh, I think you'll see... Uh, some very beneficial results from that. Now, the purity of your intentions, the purity of your body, the purity of your thoughts, the purity of your psychology uh, will begin to go through transformation. And it is this transformation that is so very important that you actively engage with. Control how you think. Let's just start there. Control how you think. Control how, why you think how you think. Is it societal programming that you're responding to? Is it something that happened to you as a child? And so basically experiential programming that happened to you? Why are you thinking the way you're thinking? Are you thinking... Uh, because you have low self-esteem that you need to dominate other people? Are you thinking that because you, uh, you, you, you have this serious anger issue, so therefore you respond in an angry format? Why are you thinking the way you're thinking? And let's begin to change that thinking volitionally. Let yourself be in charge of how you begin to purify your expression on this world. The kundalini will assist. Uh, you'll often receive bliss, waves of bliss, as you make the right choice. And so, you know, the whole pain-pleasure teaching modality can be experienced by you. Uh, Let's see, I'm being reminded to give the guest call-in number. Here it is. Guest call-in number is the area code. It's the one typically you see in parentheses. 347 and then 934 and 0026. So once again, the number to call in if you want to call in is 347-934-0026. Purity of mind. Purity of mind, and I mean purity of thought process. Purity of emotion. Okay, purity of emotions. Are you doing this because of a certain feeling, a certain expression of an emotional nature, uh, purity of psychology. Uh, what What is the psychology of your culture telling you to do and why are they telling you to do such and such a thing? Purity of spirit. Well, if you're having kundalini, then you've already kind of reached a level of purity of spirit uh, already. Now, if you're chasing kundalini, well, that's a different story. If you're chasing the kundalini, once again, to get the special powers well, then you're going to need to look at why it is you want to have special powers and why do you think Kundalini is the best way to go. Uh, Adya Shanti, I think, uh, I think that's a to him. He said something very important the other day that I posted on my Facebook page. It's like enlightenment is a severe level of personal destruction. That is so correct. Uh, it is a level of destruction. You destroy who you thought you were, why you thought you were, who you were. You destroy your understandings of life and what you once thought was so strong and so, you know, made and, you know, written in stone. Well, that no longer. Enlightenment is a level of destruction that occurs so that the new being, the new uh, transformed being can emerge. And so 
when we look at the powers of the Kundalini, we're looking at levels of destruction in order to get there. Kundalini itself is an enlightenment process, so it will bring up levels of yourself that need to be changed. And sometimes within that change, a level of destruction is given so that change can occur. Okay. It's like a hurricane. You look at a hurricane, uh, the, the devastation of a hurricane can also be seen as God's urban renewal. Well, God has some urban renewal to do with you as a Kundalini awakening individual. And, and are, often that urban renewal will be a destruction of the paradigm of life as you have understood it to be up to this point. So please, please understand that and be aware of that. Okay. Clear audience, clairvoyance, telekinesis, telepathy. Uh, you know, these are all fairly common within a Kundalini context. Healing uh, is common. Uh, so is uh, the uh, levitation. But there are other things that are not so common. Bilocation, being able to bilocate, being in two places at the same time, or Scatter, as I call it. I, when I do a Shakti pot, I, I scatter myself to as many people as are asking for the Shakti pot to be given. And, and for me, the way I can explain this to you is that every part of my human body, every cell of my human body, has the potential to be at a complete chrism, a Kundalini awakened chrism. And that cellular cell will scatter a, a a a part of its presence to an individual. So if I am made up of 17 trillion cells, well, I can scatter 17 trillion different places at the same time. And so uh, by location of, of, a, of a magnitude of trillions or even gazillions, however you need, you know, can be done because within the levels of understanding of time and space, uh, we are replicated many, many times over, many, 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 many times over, and not just through the cells, but through through the layers of time, and through the layers of uh, folded space, I guess, how one can almost put it. <laughs> it's hard, it's hard. Really, it's, it's, it's such a great challenge to try to bring this into words. Uh, so, by location is something that often occurs as well. Uh, define the laws of physics within a physical level. So, within a uh, breathing underwater, which is something I was able to do as a kid, it was very strange. Didn't understand it. Didn't really think that I needed to understand it. It just occurred. Uh, that type of thing can occur. Uh, coincidences, I'm going to suggest that inside of a Kundalini equation, there are very few coincidences, if any. Uh, manifesting. Manifesting can be extreme in its ability to read your thought and manifest that thought. So, oh my gosh, I need procedural face masks in order to, to go into my mom's hospital room, and I have I have no medical experience, and gosh, where do I get a procedural face mask? Boom, all of a sudden, there they are. And I don't mean out of thin air. I mean, often they'll just, uh, all of a sudden, you know, it might fall off the back of a truck and right where you're walking. There's, oh, there's a box of procedural face masks. So you'll be given intuitive guidance on where to get them, okay? Uh, Kundalini manifestation and coincidence and guidance often are merged into one equation so that you can get what you need to receive uh, when you need it, how you need it, and what it is you need to receive. So that type of manifestation is very, very common. Or And it, and it also manifests on the level of meeting a certain pe person or, or, or learning a certain uh, skill set in order to, to manifest a, a certain type of thing. Or, or situation. So, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, thank you. Liz has a question. Hello, Liz. How are you? Hi. Uh, I, guess, 
Hi, Liz. Yeah, I have to hear your voice. Oh <laughs> boy, are, are are you on your speakerphone? Can you can you uh, can you take off the speakerphone? It's getting a a really large echo. Oh, okay. I I I uh, I don't. Right now, I have no choice. I just have a quick question, and then I will let, let you go. Okay. Okay. Uh, the question that um for the you know for the forgiveness part. For the what part? Forgive. Forgiveness. Forgiving. Forgiving. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um you know I I I had a lot of um. A lot of trauma, and I, I felt I felt I forgive, but whenever I think of, we go back and think about the same kind of thing, I still have trouble. You know, I still feel hurt. So, so what I'm trying to say that those hurt is from the memory we our brain takes from the past. You know. Okay. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. All right, very good. I'll address that right now. Uh, with forgiving, it's forgiving has to be done over and over and over and over. It's yeah, not something you know. that no, no, yeah, I understand. I understand that you've done it over and over, but yeah. it, it it's a quality of repetition. It has to get into the into the into the channels of the mind. Okay. And you begin to understand if you if you're able to understand why a certain person did a certain thing to you, uh, you begin to understand that that they're a human being too. They're they're a child of God as well, and what they did was probably done to them. And what was done to them, uh, its natural expression would be to carry it on. It's just like uh, child abuse is something that goes on and on and on beyond every generation. Uh, so you begin to look at the foundations of what was done, why it was done, when it was done. You know, was it done when you were just a, a very, very small child? Or, you know, what was the circumstance in which it was done? And as you begin to learn the circumstances of why a certain person did a certain thing to you, you begin to be to develop reference points for what was done and why it was done. And when you have these reference points of why that certain thing was done to you, you begin to understand and you begin to form a greater level of forgiveness and, shall we say, more so than just a surface forgiveness. Sometimes we need to beneath the surface of that action and why it was done, why it was done to you. You know, and then you find reference points. These reference points can be used as as a handle or as a step to take you beyond the normal surface forgiveness and go into a deeper level of forgiveness. And then, and then you you, you begin to look at 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 your karma and your own karma. And you begin, okay, all right, what did I learn from this on a karmic level? You know, I was I was I was severely hurt, and how how have I learned? How has this made me a better person? Will I ever do what was done to me to another person? And I think with you, Liz, that answer will be no. Am I right? Yeah. You will never ever do what was done to you to another person. Okay, you have stopped it. In its tracks. Now, yes, if you go back to the memory over and over and over, and you re- and you relive the memory over and over and over, then you're still going to feel the pain. The pain was part of the process of learning what it was not to do. Okay. Mm-hmm. You can um. get with a greater clarity uh, if you go into a deeper level of. of recognition of why a person did a certain thing. And you may not know what happened to them in their life. You know, was it their parent that did that to them? Was it their was it another person that did it to them? And you just kinda of go go back through the generations. You know, 
you don't really know how long this activity has been in place within the within the generations of the person that did this to you. But now, now, it comes to an end with you. So, uh, so uh, I, I have a question about the, is this life, uh, it's a dream. And our dream is also a dream. But we can let the go of the dream, but why we cannot let go of this dream? <laughs> this this life dream. Um, okay, what was the question again? The question that uh, this life, we have a body, it's also a dream. And then we dream oh. at night and also dream. We can let forget the dream in at night easily, but we can't forget the net net, the, the dream we're going through during the during the time we have a body. That's this dream oh, must yeah. be different than a real night dream. Well you have a body for a reason. You know, the the body is a vehicle of the spirit and of the soul and the soul goes through different levels of of uh evolution. And as you come into the Kundalini, you're coming into levels of evolution that will indeed allow you to not have to come back and have another body. Uh, but dreaming the dream of the body right now is a necessary function. And I know, I know, let's just make fly in the face of, of, of many uh, gurus and swamis and whatnot who say, oh my gosh, you're trapped in Maya and if you just see that there, there is no body, there is no universe, there is no physicality, there is no this or that, well, you know, let's let's just take it a little slower, shall we? You have the body. You have to drive your kid to school. You have to feed yourself. You have to clothe your children. You know, these are certain levels of responsibilities that we're not allowed ethically to just forget about and go into, oh, okay, well, I'm just going to get rid of all my Maya all at once. Well, no. This dream that we're living right now is indeed, it is indeed a dream. You're absolutely correct, Liz. This is a dream. But it's a dream that we we have a, a necessity to dream or we wouldn't be here dreaming it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so you mean we, we need to, you, need, you mean we need to, uh, we need to remember this dream, right? That's why it's hard to forget, right? Well, we need to remember the dream so that we can forgive. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, I, I, I let you go. I think, I think, I think you made it clear enough. Thank you so much, Master Chrisom. Oh, you're very welcome, Liz. Very welcome. And um, I, I hope I made that a little clearer for you. Um, yeah. Okay. Again, thank you for calling in. Gosh, you're one of the few who have called in, so I want to thank okay. you very much for being a part. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. Uh, so there we have it. There we have it. Uh, levels of forgiveness uh, pretty much tie right in to the, the levels of purity that we want to gain. Uh, before we use any of these kundalini powers. So by location, yes, is, is, is where I think I left off. By location, um, the top of your head can turn into a giant eye. So you'll see in 360 degrees. I know it sounds crazy, but it is It is what it is. It, it is a very real thing. Uh, Centara... Yes, cousin. Is there another you hear person me? Is there another person There online? is indeed. There is indeed. I was just about to, to say hello to them. Will I put them straight on to you? Sure, if they're willing. One sec. Yeah. I'm not sure if they're just listening or not. Will I check first? Check first, yeah. I don't want yeah. to. Yeah, okay. Them. Yeah, we'll okay. do that. So I'll go ahead with it. So, yeah, the top of your head can turn into one big eye. Uh, and this eye can see into into levels of the physical, but also into the spiritual. Um, this this is a power that 
doesn't tend to stay a long time with people. Often it, it comes and it goes. And, and so many of these skills, by the way, will come and go. They do have a fade-in and a fade-out quality. And all, a lot of it depends on how much you nourish your kundalini. And by nourishing your kundalini, I'm talking about purification. I'm talking about embracing the difficult aspects as much as you embrace the, the, the pleasurable one. So much, this is so much about soul evolution and, and the purification process of, of what it is to have the kundalini. You need to be able to get rid of programs that, that do not serve you within a kundalini context so that you can have these special skills. Uh, getting into some, some more of the skills that uh, astral projection is often something that happens before kundalini comes. But it can also happen during the process as well. Um, another skill set is vision, seeing vision. Having waking vision where you are being given specific instruction uh, about soul purification typically uh, uh, from a, a high spiritual source. Uh, many of my students have had Jesus appear to them. And Jesus will come to them and we'll just stare at them for a time and then give them advice about forgiveness, what they need to do in their individual lives in order to embrace forgiveness on a greater level. Uh, lots of people who are into Buddhism will see Buddha, and the Buddha will come to them and give them specific instruction. Um, it is very, very common. And this is as much a... It, it's more of a phenomena, actually, than a skill set. It's not like... You can call them in, though sometimes that is indeed what, what a person can do. But I thought I'd, I, I'd better uh, bring that up to them. There is a word for the psychic sense of smell. Uh, but I can't think of it right now. But you, you can often develop a skill set of smelling uh, using the, 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 the nasal sense of smell in a psychic format, i.e. you'll know who somebody is by their smell. You could be blind, you could be deaf, but you'll smell that person, you'll know who they are. But it's kind of what, uh, what some of the animals have uh, when they use the sense of smell. Uh, I, I look at Lasha sometimes, she's my great cat teacher, and uh, yesterday she was out on the lawn and we were having a little uh, communication out there. All of a sudden she turns her head, she she lifts it into the soft breeze, and she starts to smell. And you can see that she's recognized certain levels of smell. And I don't know if it's predator or prey or what it was, but with the kundalini, you can begin to smell consciousness. Consciousness. So just know that that is a psychic gift as well. Moving into some more of these psychic gifts. Uh, communion with plants is also a psychic gift that, that occurs with a person. Uh, this type of commuting with plants and tying into the plant kingdom. Uh, Santara? Hi, person Prison. Yeah, no, that person didn't want to come online, but actually they were saying how much they um, enjoyed listening to Liz's question and her question about forgiveness and that... Um, when somebody actually rings up and asks a question that involves their own process, how um, the teachings that you give become deeper through the experience of listening to it with somebody online. And she was saying she would love if somebody who was having some of the experiences of the skills and the powers would ring up and speak about their process so as to deepen the teachings and for the listeners to learn more. So oh, that was no, the point. I, well, I would like to. I, I would like to thank Liz for calling in. She she is the one that that, that gave that teaching. Really, without her question, the teaching would never have been exactly. given. So, Liz, once again, Liz, thank you so much for calling in. And yes, indeed, if people do have skill sets that they want to call in and question. Uh, have questions about or things of that nature, that's fine. 
often Kundalini will not allow a person to say, oh, I have such and such a skill set, because once again, that, that begins to border on self-aggrandizement. And, but yet, if they if they are pure in, in their in their integrity and pure in in what it is their question may do for other people, then I think that would be just fine. I think a person could call in quite clearly within those within those guidelines. Once again, you know, it's not about having power over other people. It's not about showing yourself to be the greatest of the great of whatever, you know, the the, the leader of this organization or that organization. If, and if you're around a person or you have a teacher that is that way, I'd start looking for another teacher, seriously. If a person is, is you know, I'm this and I am the great and terrible Oz, uh, and I'm only using Oz as a, you know, kind of a, as a symbol of a, of a the ego. And if you look at The Wizard of Oz, the original movie, you know, the great and powerful Oz was really this guy waving his hand over a machine behind a curtain. You know, oh, that's great. So so I'd like you to look at people who are in that level of soul development where they they have levels of self-worth that they need to deal with. Uh, you know, you don't look at them hatefully. You just kind of forgive them and move on. Move on to a different teacher or a different teaching. Uh, Kundalini will typically tell you this. Now, the other thing is, 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 as I said earlier, in purity, you need to begin to evolve yourself so that you can have the, the depth of experience of both the pain and the joy. The pain and the joy. Uh, many of the skill sets will come to you in your pain. Seriously, it'll no, because the ego really does not enjoy pain. Therefore, when pain comes, the ego goes away, and as and as the ego goes away, well, the skill set can set in. Okay, so yeah, in many ways, and if you look at Saint John of the Cross in the, in the Catholic Christian tradition, you know he had an awakening during torture, and so of course you know he was quite egoless during during those those scenarios, but. But the Kundalini came to him in great waves, great waves of bliss and healing for him. Same, same with uh, Saint Teresa of Avila, his teacher. Saint Teresa of Avila, you know, she she had great levels of of, uh, of experience and pain as well. And so will we often have these levels of pain, and we need to be able to learn from that pain, embrace that pain, so that our skill set can be can be received. Sometimes, not always. Sometimes, just the the activation and the awakening of the Kundalini itself is enough to bring on these skill sets. And there are many, many, many more skill sets to, for me to name. And I'm not going to be able to go into them uh, as much as I would like to. So let me get into some of these other ones. Um, visioning. Visioning is where I left off. Where where great exalted personage can come in and give a person a teaching uh, through through the waking vision state. Uh, touch. Touch can become a, a form of, of healing, uh, also a form of, of communication, a form of, of rapture. Uh, when you blend touch and love, uh, love of a quality that is beyond the ego's ability to manufacture. Okay. Touch. And, and what I, I, I hope you're seeing a pattern here. The five senses have an equivalent uh, expression of five exalted senses. Taste, touch. Taste, touch, hearing, feeling, feeling. Um, smelling, they all have a counterpart that is of a divine quality, but there are more. There are more. But how do I explain to you those skills that go beyond your current reference points of, of the five senses? Now, see, this is where, where I struggle at times. Uh, out-of-body 
processes and I went into the to the visions. Uh, while I'm thinking about this, if anybody else wants to call up, the number is three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. I have about fourteen minutes left and I'd love to talk to to all of you guests that I see are logged in, guests three five one eight, three six oh one, three six oh three, three seven four three, four two two three and four four eight seven. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you do have any questions, please feel free to ask. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Uh, I've been considering, uh, I, I know I've had this as a weekly show uh, since uh, December 12th of 2012. Uh, I've been considering uh, decreasing that to once every two weeks. And if those of you could, could vote one for yes and two for no, let me know so that I know how well this is being received. Uh, up to this point, I don't, I'm not getting a lot of emails at my kfireforall at yahoo.com uh, mail address. So I don't know how people are receiving this so much. And, and if, you know, I, I prefer not to waste my time if, if this isn't something that uh, people are enjoying. If this, you know, I, I know that some people enjoy it, and I appreciate the fact that you all are tuning in. But uh, let me know if you, if you would rather uh, a, a bi-weekly type of presentation. I'd be more than happy to do that, or even once a month. So please uh, uh, indicate to Centara or to myself, or even for those of you that are on the chat line right now, let me know. You know, let me know if, if, if you think this would be a good plan. So right now, uh, let's go into an area of super strength. Typically, uh, with the super strength, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can lift a car. Don't do it in a self-aggrandizing way. In other words, you don't uh, pick up that car, hold it over your head, and throw it over the fence. What you do is you call other people over. You say, hey, I need some help with this car, and then you basically lift the car with their seeming help. This is something that, that is allowed. It's just... You don't want to really have a lot of people pointing fingers at you and going, oh, my God, look what that person did. That can be very dangerous to you as a as a human being in a, in a flesh body on this planet because, of, first of all, let's just look what the authorities in the United States would do. They would have you captured and dissected just to see how you work. They'll go through you and they'll look at you. Oh, you say you're Kundalini active, huh? Where is that in the body? Just to, exactly. Oh, well, then we need to dissect your tailbone just to make sure that it's there. You know, no. so. No. Yes. Sorry, Chris, and you have a call when you're ready. I'm ready. And it's from. Yeah, okay. Pushing it through now. Okay, yes, you're hello. through. Hello. Hello. Yes, hello. hello. This is Carla speaking. My name is Carla. This is who? Carla. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm fine, thanks. <laughs> um, I called because uh, I have a few questions. Um, okay. Um, the first is that um, um, uh, since uh, lately I have... Uh, uh, I mean, the last three, four years, I have uh, experienced uh, what I think it is um, uh, the symptoms of um, of uh, Kundalini uh, rising. Uh, and but um, at times I get um, a little bit uh, insecure because um, 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 certain persons have. Uh, uh, let me know that, uh, okay, if you are uh, a single person, you cannot raise uh, your your kundalini uh, by your own. Uh, okay, that, that is never my intention, you know. I mean, I, I don't go around and okay. think that. Uh, Carla, yes? Carla, go ahead and speak to that. Uh, yeah. Most people don't really have a clue about what they're talking about. They're kind of locked into a a program of, of teaching uh, that that is often repeated that you can't do this or you can't do that because, <laughs> okay. you know, my teacher said it that way or whatever. You can have 
the Kundalini can awaken itself all by mm-hmm. itself. You whether okay. or not you are you are with a couple or you are with another person. So yeah, if you feel That's that you're right. having Kundalini symptoms, don't doubt yourself. Okay, but you know sometimes um, and, you know. And don't you, let them, don't 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 let other people who do not have Kundalini. Tell you about no, your right. Kundalini. I mean, how can they explain? <laughs> how can they know? <laughs> and I, exactly. it was just uh, uh, one of my questions, just to start up, uh, um, you know, our conversation. And then I, my next point is that that um, since um, uh, almost 20 years ago, uh, I broke uh, my tailbone actually yeah. twice. Yeah. And um, I uh, suspected that um, this physical uh, infortune um, could have uh, uh, influenced uh, um, uh, the development, of, for example, of uh, the, the Kundalini. Yes, uh, yes. Raised. Carla, and, let me, let me speak that. Yes. You're absolutely correct. A, a fractured tailbone can initiate mm-hmm. a kundalini uh, activation and awakening process in a person. Uh, I've okay, seen it happen good. too many different times with too many different people. So you're okay. right on. You're right on with that. Chris. Okay, okay, because that was what I, I detected. But uh, not being um, an expert in kundalini rising, uh, so I, I, of, course, of course I had many doubts, and I tried to get a knowledge uh, um, about um, the kundalini, but... Uh, it has never been um, uh, pointed out, as you say. Just yes. Do you have headphones? No, no, really. I'm sorry. I. That's okay. We're I just, know that there we're is just a getting an echo. We're just uh, getting an I echo. Should, yes, you know why? Because I'm uh, listening. Still, I close now. I close the um, the program. Okay. So okay, you okay. can. Okay. No, yeah, I very, think it helps. Yes. Um, I don't know. Probably you wanted to to say more about uh, the fact of uh, a person breaking the the well, yeah, that, that, you back know, when bone. A person, when a person fractures the tailbone, uh, that mm-hmm. can release a huge in, infusion of energy into the yeah. person. But you have to remember, you have to mm-hmm. remember that the kundalini is intelligent. And mm-hmm. within that intelligence, it will begin to look, you know, it will begin to modulate the person's life in a way that the mm-hmm. awakening begin to take place without, you know, karmically speaking, you know, if the, if the person has a karma that allows it to come mm-hmm. to them without destroying them, without destroying them. Uh, so okay. if that happens to you, then, then I want to, first of all, I want to congratulate you for uh-huh. for <laughs> having the accident. <laughs> Yeah, well, I got it twice, uh, and uh, wow, <laughs> I tell you, uh, it has been uh, one twice the, the most painful experience in my life, besides yeah. uh, the fact that lately here in this last three, four years, uh, I will, I'm always in pain, constantly. And, uh, but I'm, uh, you yeah? begin to come out of that pain. Uh, yeah, the Kundalini really. can help you as as you give as yeah, you, as well, you give credibility to your Kundalini. It can begin mm-hmm. to heal that pain. Mm-hmm. It can actually, if you can, you can get into levels of forgiveness that will also begin to to heal that pain that's, as well. That's just correct what you say because uh, that that's what has taught me to learn about uh, love, forgiveness, acceptance. And um, uh, having this, uh, not just tolerance, but um, this unconditionally uh, feeling of, um, you know, transcending uh, anything. Because I've been also through a lot of uh, traumas uh, in my youth, uh, experience in my true in my youth, and. Uh, uh, it, it has, it, it, well, I don't know, uh, maybe in few words I could say that uh, what it appeared to be a disgrace, it has been my best um, uh, 
this and blessings. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, yeah. Now, now, going into to what you just said about you know the, the trauma that you've had throughout your life as a youth and and otherwise, mm-hmm. uh, a Kundalini person, a person that's going to have Kundalini in their life, uh, will mm-hmm. often have that Chinese curse. And that Chinese curse says, "May you meet all your karma in one life." But it will, yeah, it will, yeah, exactly. But it will be with this, the caveat, which means the 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 kind of the the limited reason for this happening is you're you're meeting as much as your karma as you need in order to have the kundalini awakened. Mm, I see. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So your whole life. Your whole life has been mm-hmm. dedicated to having the kundalini come up in you. So, That's so I want you to yeah. validate yourself, Carla. I want you to validate yourself. And I want you to yeah, validate I kundalini. Yeah, I do. Do not listen to those people who do not know. No. No, okay, yeah. Uh, you you are just uh, confirming me that um, whatever I've, I've been um, thinking for, uh, uh, for the Kundalini, and now it, it has been confirmed, and uh, and that's why I I wanted to call you because I say, well, you know, I I must have uh, I must have that kind of confirmation somehow, and you gave it to me, uh, you know, oh, because wow. yeah, really, uh, believe me, because. Um, uh, all the things that you are mentioning uh, through the program um, are something that uh, I have been experiencing. And um, but of course, I mean, until now, I have never really had uh, someone else, uh, uh, yeah, confirming or affirming it for me. You know, and, well, you, uh, and you, you got it. You got it. Carl. Yeah. You got I, it. <laughs> yes, you're right. Thank you. And. Um, uh, just, just I don't know. There are a few minutes left in the program, but I just uh, finally want to ask you: in this connection um, with the so-called pains, I experience. Um, uh, this is not a pain, but it is a, a great, strong pulsation that goes up and down from from the the. Uh, back head to the base of the spine. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. constantly. Uh, sometimes and, and it'll, it'll it will increase. It, it, it can increase and it can decrease and and yeah, yeah, that is good. Let that happen. Step out of the way. Okay, Your I just want to know. It way. Okay, is it this this pulsation in connection with the the Kundalini rising or or? or yeah. Or, Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, good. Okay, absolutely. okay, because I just want you to... I have to, I have to say, Carla, you're doing very, very well. You're doing very, very well with this. In what sense? I can hear your voice. I can, I can hear your voice certain levels of, of, of understanding and experience, and you're doing very, very well with this, and I want you to continue oh, to, to do so well, and I want to thank you. Are we going to run out of time here? I know we're going to run yeah, out of time, but... Yeah. Uh, I'm so sorry about that because I should, I no, could have no, no. called you before, but I I was a little unsure. You, if you understand, uh, because I, there has been a lot of uh, things it's that. Good. Um, it's good. No, you're you're doing great, and it's going to cut us off real quick here. So I want to thank you. Thank you I for thank calling. You <laughs> thank you too very much. I mean, you made me happy actually. Uh, a big confirmation and uh, affirmation and whatever. Uh, Thank you very much, deeply from my heart, okay? Oh, you're very, very welcome. And thank you for calling in. My gosh, it's been a real, it's been a real fruitful uh Well, you, you don't today, know what, what the joy, what kind of joy you, you created in me because of this is uh, so, wow. Uh, now I know exactly uh, what's going on with all this. And, oh, you're um, doing, you're doing will, great. Will, you keep I'll going. Start, to write what to, what to do with these people that uh, try to um, to go against me, especially because of this reason. But um, thank you, thank you for calling. Thank you, and thank you everyone for listening. This is Tristan, and uh, see you next week.
just told me I had 10 seconds left, so I guess I ended it a little early. But Carla and Liz, Santara, everybody listening, thank you.